Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking cinematic title effect using Trap Code and Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine at around about 25 frames per second. And this time I'm just gonna bump up the duration to just under a minute. Then just press OK. Once we've got that, then we need to create a new solid and we need to search for our effect called Trap Code Form from Red Giant. So just drag that onto the solid. Now, Trap Code Form is a little bit CPU intensive, so it can slow down your computer, so keep that in mind. So anyway, so once we're in form, what we can do is we can have a look at some of these uh, settings in here just by going to the designer. Now, there are a lot of presets that you can have a look at and honestly, they're pretty cool straight out of the box. So if you like something here, you can just uh, use it and you can also um, edit some of these things. So, you know, they've already got like colors and things like that already set in and you can use this for backgrounds and uh and things like that but what we're gonna do is we're not gonna use a preset we're just gonna come over here to the fluid settings and i'm just gonna change some of these uh settings over here so now you can see that you know once you start to change some of this uh these fluid settings you can actually see what is happening to the trap code form in here and you get all these particle cool effects and uh it's looking pretty good but what we're going to do is we're just going to start from scratch and I'm just going to add a camera. I'm just going to add an 80 mil camera and then I'm just going to come over here to my uh, camera controls. I'm just going to rotate it slightly just so that we can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to go back to the designer and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to come over here to fluid and double click this and I'm just going to change it to let's say a light vortex ring and then I'm going to press apply. So now if we preview this animation, you can see what is actually happening here. So it starts off and then it moves into this really cool particle effect. And I think that looks pretty good. But what we're going to do is we're going to change a few things. So we're going to come over here to our base form. We're going to change the base form to box strings. We're going to change the size to XYZ individual. We're just going to lower the Y. We're going to bring that down to about 400. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the strings in Y. We're going to put that to about 20. And then what we need to do is we're going to keep on going down and we're going to move into particle and we're going to change a few things here. So we're going to change size random to 10%. And then what we're going to do is and if you want to change the color, you can also change the color in here to whatever you like and that will apply a color on it if you like. But I'm not going to change the color for now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to fluid. And now because we use the preset, we don't really have to touch much in here. But if you want to change things like, you know, maybe the size or something like that, you can do that here. So this is changing the scale of it. So actually we might as well bump it up to, let's say, maybe even 130. So you can play around with some of these settings and once you're happy with it, then you can move on to the fractal field. And once we're in the fractal field, what we wanna do is we wanna bump up this effect opacity to about 30. And you can see what's kind of happening here. So once we've done all of that, then what we need to do is we need to put in a little bit of animations in here. So we're going to we're going to find the point where we want it to start. So I probably want it to start uh, maybe around there. So I'm just going to bring that to about there. And then I, I want it to, to go for at least, I don't know, maybe 15 seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the camera settings. We're going to go into our camera options and we're going to make sure that this depth of field is on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play around a bit with the aperture. So you can see what's actually happening here. So as I move the aperture, the depth of field, so the things are starting to get blurry in the background. So what we want to do is we, we want to find our sweet spot. So I'm just playing around with some of the settings. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to animate this focus distance. So I'm going to start it 
maybe I'm going to start it where it's, you know, not much is actually visible here. So when we have our text that will appear here, you can actually see it. And then when we get to the end, I'm just going to increase it until I get to somewhere that I like. So now if we preview that, you can see how it affects the rest of the composition. So now I'm pretty happy with that. The other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a null object and I'm going to make sure that this null object is a 3D layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the camera to the null object and then I'm going to go down into the transform settings and we're going to add some rotation here. So on the Y rotation, I'm just going to set a keyframe and then at the end, towards the end of the clip, I'm just going to bump it up to maybe something like 80. And so now that fluid motion is rotating as well in 3D space. And so that's looking pretty cool. And the next thing that we can do for this is we can add another solid. So this time I'm going to add another dark gray solid. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it down and I'm just going to change the mode to overlay. So now I've got like a really dark grayish kind of uh, effect happening here. So the final thing I'm going to do before we get to our text is I'm just going to add a, an adjustment layer. So now on my adjustment layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some lumetri color. So I'm just going to go and double click this and then I'm going to go into creative. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply one of these looks. So I'm going to go with an SL big and you can see what is actually happening to the animation. So now it's it's the depth of field is now looking a lot better because we've applied some of that color to it. So now there's other things that you can add inside of our Lumetri color to change a few of the things. So for example, if you want to change maybe some of the saturation, you know, bring that down or increase it, you know, to make that color a little bit more visible. That's something you could uh, play around with. Or you could go back into basic uh, correction and you can play around with some of the exposure. You can play around with some of the contrast, also the shadows, etc. So once you're happy with your look, then what we need to do is we need to pre-compose all of that. And we're just going to apply our text. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to trim this uh, comp to our work area. So we're going to do that by pressing Control, Shift and X and now it trims it to just that work area. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a new text uh, layer. And so I'm gonna call it Cinematic Titles. Or you can call it whatever you want. Now the font that I'm using is Bebas New and I'm using the book version. So once you're happy with that, I'm just gonna make sure that I've increased the size in between the letters. So something about 350 maybe i can uh, bring up the font size to about 120 and what i'm going to do is i'm going to align it to the center of my composition and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for an effect called evaporate so evaporate is an animation preset now you have to be careful where your playhead is because when you apply this animation preset, it will already start the animation process. So now you can see that it's got this really cool blur effect coming in, but the problem is, is that we want it reversed. So I'm going to press U on my keyboard and all I'm going to do is reverse these keyframes. So I'm just going to extend that first keyframe out slightly. And so now when I preview that back, you can see here that the text will slowly come in and that's looking pretty cool. It's going to bring it in a little bit quicker, but we also want to do a kind of scale in effect. Now you can do this uh, pretty quickly with another animation preset called decrease tracking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it back at the start again, put it on the cinematic title, and then I'm going to open up the animator settings and I'm just going to move this one till it's off the screen. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have the title moving in slowly with the nice particles in the background. And so other things that you can do to this text is that you can um, maybe add a drop shadow if you want the text to stand out a bit more, you can add some glow or anything like that. 
So the final thing that you need to add is some sound design for this. So if you go and add some cinematic uh, sound effects, it makes a world of difference. And there you have it. So there's a quick little tutorial on how to get really cool, unique titles and cinematic intros out of trap code form. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.